افلا يتدبرون القران ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا افلا يتدبرون القران ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد The Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Important for us, every Muslim To ponder over the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It's important for all mankind To respond to the call of the Quran this is something that the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith that he gave the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the parable of a sirat mustaqim, a straight path. And on both sides of the straight path, two walls. And in each wall it has doors. And each door has a curtain covering these doors. And then there's a collar on top of the sirat, a collar on top of the straight path, calling people, saying, Come on in, enter, enter the Sarat, enter the straight path. And there's a caller in the midst of the Sarat. This hadith reported by Imam Ahmad and others, and we mentioned it before. The point of the hadith is, afterwards the Prophet ﷺ explained the meaning of this parable, and he said that the caller on top of the Sarat, the caller by the straight path, is the Qur'an. The Qur'an, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is calling humanity. Come on and enter into the fold of Islam. Enter and read the final message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read it and find out for yourself the truth. That it brings nothing but the truth that fits the proper nature of the human being. Worshipping none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doing what is righteous, staying away from what is evil. And be an obedient servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Understanding the purpose of our life. And that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful. This is the message of the Qur'an. And it shows the affairs of those who would be righteous and believers. And what would happen in the hereafter. And how people will be split into two groups. The believers and the disbelievers. And then it talks also about the nations before. And the struggle between the truth and the falsehood. And what happened to them. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the victory to the believers. For the people living in the present time to learn from this and to be steadfast and to endure patience and to be able to fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we learn in the Quran and we should not deprive ourselves from learning the beauty and the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're still in Surah Al-Baqarah and in verse 136 after the set of verses that talks about Ibrahim alayhi salam and Yaqub, Jacob, one of the messengers of Allah, and refuting the call of those who would say that the only way of guidance is to be a Jew or a Christian. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called everyone to follow the way of Ibrahim, Abraham peace be upon him, that his way was that he swerved away, he stayed away from shirk, associating partners with Allah, and he was steadfast in the monotheism, and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and this is basically what the religion of Islam is all about. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 136 in Surah Al-Baqarah, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قولوا آمنا بالله وما أنزل إلينا وما أنزل إلى إبراهيم وإسماعيل وإسحاق ويعقوب والأسباط وما أوتي موسى وعيسى وما أوتي النبيون من ربهم which means, say, and this is for the believers, we have believed in Allah, 
and what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to Ibrahim, Abraham and Ismail and Ishaq, Isaac and Jacob and the descendants, al Asbat, and what was given to Moses and Jesus and what was given to the prophets from the Lord we make no distinction between any of them and we are Muslims, meaning in submission to him. This is such a powerful statement that the Most High subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us, basically ordering the human beings to say that. To say that not just with their own tongues because it won't benefit them if they would say it only with their tongues. To say it with their hearts and to say it with their tongues and then their parts of their bodies will be truthfully applying what they said. How can a person say with their own hearts? The speech of the heart is the belief. And this is the meaning of saying it with your heart, meaning believing in this. And that's why for a person to embrace the religion of Islam, the belief in the heart has to be there. And the person has to utter the words of the shahada to enter the fold of Islam unless the person is not able to speak. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering all mankind and for the believers to say, Qulu, this is an order, say, Amanna Billah, we believe in Allah. Amanna, past tense of the word Iman, belief, and that means we believe in the past, we believe in the present, and we would stay in the state of belief till the moment of death. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it permissible for a person to say, I'm a believer? This is something that the ulama talked about. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to say, I believe in Allah. Believing in Allah, definitely a person should say that. But when it comes to the understanding of the comprehensive meaning of al-Iman, that Iman or faith is not just a belief in the heart, it's the whole religion of al-Islam, that if a person dies in the state of complete Iman, that means died in the state of repentance, that means any sin, that a person committed had repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person would enter, the, would enter Jannah from the first instinct without no reckoning or punishment before. And this is basically the complete Iman. So that's why it's better for a person to say, I, am, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amanna billah. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this basically, the three types of the Tawheed to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is the Rabb, that he is the Lord, the sustainer, the provider, the owner of all things. And to believe that he is the only one worthy of worship. And to believe in his names and attributes in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated them. In the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And many other aspects but basically this is the general meanings of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran. This is again clarifying and stating or the declaration of faith for the believers, refuting after, refuting all the ways of the nations before. What is the religion of Islam? What is the message to all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to hold fast to it? Believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say that we believe in Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. We worship him alone. وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا And what has been revealed to us? The Quran, the final message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمِ And not just that, we, only, we, do, we do not only believe in what was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. A Muslim is not a Muslim unless he or she would believe in all what has been revealed to all the messengers of Allah. وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمِ And what have been revealed to Ibrahim, Abraham, peace be upon him, and Ismail, his son, وإسحاق, Isaac, and Yaqub, Jacob, the father of the descendants, Asbat, the twelve sons of Jacob, and from them Bani Israel, the children of Israel, to believe in all that was revealed to them. Believe in all what was revealed to them. وَمَا أُوتِيَ مُوسَى وَعِيسَى And what has been given to Musa, Moses, and Isa, Jesus the son of Mary. The two messengers of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, that have many followers till today, but not true followers. Because the true followers would follow the religion of Islam. The true message of Musa, the true message of Isa alayhi salam is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and not to associate partners with him. And to believe in all the messengers and one of which is the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. وَمَا أُوتِيَ النَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ Believing in these specific messengers and believing in all the prophets 
and all the messengers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether we know or whether we do not know, believing in all of them. If they were messengers, if they were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, disbelieving in one of them makes a person a disbeliever. Takes them outside the fold of the truth immediately. That's why we believe in all the prophets, all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ We do not differentiate between one or the other in matters of belief. They are messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the basic difference between the Muslims, the believers, and the other ways and the disbelievers. We believe in all the messengers. You would find others do not believe in some of the messengers. They believe in some and they disbelieve in others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to say that we believe in all the messengers of Allah. We believe in Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Ismail and Ishaq and so on and so forth. And all the messengers of Allah, we do not differentiate between one or the other. They are messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ And we are in state of Islam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are in state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same way that all these messengers, they called the people to follow and to submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a beautiful verse that the Prophet والسلام, used to recite this verse in the two rak'ah of Sunnat al-Fajr, as it's reported in the authentic hadith. The two rak'ah Sunnat al-Fajr, before the Fajr prayer, which is one of the important uh, Sunnah prayers that the Prophet وسلم, it would not leave them, whether he was a traveler or not, and that he said والسلام, that it's better than this whole world that we live in, is the two rak'ah before Fajr. The Sunnah prayer, the optional prayer. The Prophet ﷺ would recite in the first rak'ah this verse, 136 of Surah Al-Baqarah, and the like of it in Surah Al Imran, which is verse number 84 in the second rak'ah, which is basically like a person saying the articles of faith, stating the faith and the matters of belief that we believe in, that, you would, that would make you a distinct or a, a person that is very clearly different than those who would live their way of life without following the truth in its comprehensive way. This is the only way that all human beings will be united, and that is to follow this truth, is to believe in all the messengers of Allah. Not to pick and choose, but to believe in all the messengers of Allah, including the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu So as a result of that, knowing that the Prophet sallallahu would recite this verse, in the Torah of Sunnah al-Fajr, that means it's such an important verse for us to ponder over its meaning and its benefits. And we will touch into the benefits, inshallah ta'ala, towards the end of the program, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. And then verse 137, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا وَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شِقَاقٍ فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمِ which means, so if they believe in the same as you believe in, then they have been rightly guided. But if they turn away, they are only in dissension. And Allah will be sufficient for you against them. And He is the hearing, the knowing. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after ordering us to say that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. Now remember one of the uh, uh, big scholars in the religion of Islam when he would recite this verse in Salat al-Taraweeh in the night prayer in Ramadan we know that in the optional Salah in the night prayer the Prophet Sallallahu would uh, say certain things while he's reciting the verses if the verse is calling the believers to make dua supplication to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala the Prophet Sallallahu would make dua would recite the verse and he would make dua supplication during the Salah, yes. During standing and reciting the Qur'an, yes. And if he passes by a verse that talks about Jannah, paradise, the Prophet ﷺ would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah. If there's a verse that talks about the hellfire, the Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the hellfire. So this one scholar, whenever he would recite this verse, قُولُوا أَمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ and so on, after he would finish the verse, he would say, Amanna billahi wa ma unzila ilayna wa ma unzila ila Ibrahim. The verse, he would say, we believe in Allah because the verse is ordering us, say such and such. So as a way to interact with the Quran, that he fulfilled this order by saying it, I believe in Allah. 
And I believe in the books and the things that has been revealed to us, the Quran, and what has revealed to Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub and the Asbat, and what has been given to Musa and Isa, and what has been given to the messengers of Allah. We do not differentiate between any of them. We believe in all of them, and we are Muslims, reviving the faith and the belief that we believe in. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ If they believe, they referring to what has been mentioned before in verse number 135, the Jews and the Christians, and to all the different people from different walks of life, if they believe in the same thing that you believe in, فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْ means they have been guided. This is the only source of guidance. We get to talk about that and explain it more inshallah ta'ala right after the break. Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. So is it logical to say all plastic surgeries are lawful in Islam to bring or to regain beauty? It is very misleading questions need a very accurate and firm answers. Let us set up the rules and principles to cover all plastic surgeries in Islamic law. How Islam does legalize niqab or veil factor in our modern life? Is it fair to suggest that it is more cultural than it is Islamic? I would rather to answer these questions by just suggesting a very shocking fact about niqab. Are you ready for that? How Islam does legalize polygamy when Islam always says that respect natural instinct and natural feelings and knowing that not a single woman does accept anyone to share her in her kingdom. All what you have said is true. But is there any difference between your natural instinct and your natural desires? Or maybe between your interest or what you wish to have? Or maybe your interest and other interest? Is it true that anything came after the Prophet wasallam? Regarding this deen to be considered as a bid'ah, innovation, it's neither this nor that. It seems very well complicated and confusing to many Muslims. But especially what comes to the saying of the Prophet وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And Sayyidina Umar saying, نِعْمَةُ الْبِدْعَةُ هَذِهِ Let us set up the very comprehensive definition of bid'ah according to Islamic law. viewers. Hoda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah with verse number 137, Surah Al-Baqarah after stating uh, the different matters of belief that we believe in that give us the identity of a Muslim, of a believer and that would definitely show in our outside appearance as it will come, inshallah ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if they believe بِمِثْلِ مَا أَمَنْتُمْ بِهِ In the same way that you believed in, then they are guided. The word مِثْل or the like of what you believe in means that they believe, that each person has to believe. It's not believing uh, by just stating that I believe in what you believe in. No, believing in the same way in the like, meaning that they have to say, they have to believe, they have to earn this act of worship and this belief. They have to say it, they have to believe in it, and they have to act according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them. Then they are guided. بِمِثْلِ مَا أَمَنْتُمْ بِهِ In the same way that you believed in. And it shows the honor of the believers when they would say and fulfill the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said, قُولُوا أَمَنَّ When he said, say, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. If you say that, then you are honored. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say that if they would believe in the same way that you believed in, that you just said, then they are guided. And guidance needs two things. The knowledge of the truth and to follow and to do the actions. That is basically the knowledge that you learned. 
to be guided to the truth, to get to know it. And then to act according to the truth, both they basically form guidance. This is what guidance means. Guidance is not just knowing. Fir'aun, in the time of Musa alayhi salam, he knew that Musa was on the truth, but his knowledge did not benefit him. Iblis, the devil, he knew the truth, but that did not benefit him. Just the knowledge did not benefit him unless it was something that is subjected to the uh, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to act according to this knowledge. So this is what guidance is. If they believe in what you believe in, then they are guided. A very important benefit here that is very beautiful that as the ulama they say when we ponder over this verse, who is this verse is referring to initially? Who are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Ma amen tumbi? Who is the one that is being talked about here? Who are those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if they believe in what you, who is you? Referring here in this verse, the believers, yes. But who were the first of the believers that was the subject of the Quran and they received the Quran? The companions, radiallahu anhu. So this is a verse that the ulama, they, they take it as an evidence that we have to follow the belief of the companions radiallahu anhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to them initially that if people would believe in what they have believed in, meaning the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then they are guided. Whether it's for the disbelievers to embrace the religion of Islam or even among the believers, among the Muslims. Where do we get our matters of belief? From the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but people might understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ according to their own desires. And the Qur'an, the verses of the Qur'an can mean more than one thing. So how can we believe in the articles of faith and in the pillars of Al-Iman and the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on and so forth? We have to follow the belief of the companions radiallahu anhum. They understood the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in the proper way, in the perfect way and the Prophet ﷺ approved of them. And he was pleased with them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them. So they were the best examples for us to believe in the same way that they believed in. So this is an evidence that matters of aqidah, matters of belief, is not to be taken from philosophers, is not to be taken from those who came generations after the companions radiallahu anhum, when they went into philosophy and the Greek books and so on and so forth. Matters of belief is to be learned from the Qur'an, the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, the way that the companions عنهم, and the early generations of Islam believed and acted and so on and so forth. This is the way that all Muslims will be united behind the best generation ever brought to mankind. This is guidance. And as in many meanings in the Qur'an we see that, yes, there are things with the believers versus the disbelievers. Guidance, when you talk to a disbeliever, Guidance is to embrace the religion of Islam. And once a person is a Muslim, it doesn't mean that that person would get the absolute guidance in all of our affairs. It needs to be uh, practiced and step by step to the person complete guidance with actions and speech and so on and so forth. So the same way when it comes to following the companions, عنهم, a person might follow them that much. That means he has that much guidance. person, if he follow them more, that means guidance are more, and so on and so forth. And this is how the job of the believers in this life is to increase our guidance. We are in need of guidance with every word we say, in every state that we are in. On the other hand, if they turn away from guidance, وَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شقاق. If they would turn away, then they are only in dissension. If they turn away from this belief, and who would turn away from such a beautiful belief, that fits the nature of the human being. How can a human being, after hearing what we heard, would turn away from such a belief that fits the nature of the human being? What is better than believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship Him alone? And believe in all the books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. Don't differentiate between one or the other. Believe in all of them. And follow the truth and follow the final message that would make you believe in all the previous messages. According to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if they turn away, if they choose after the matter has been made clear, to turn away, فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شِقَاق They are then in dissension. Only in dissension, that means they cannot be otherwise. They are in dissension. A shikaq comes from a crack on the ground, for example. 
that would make a group of people in one side of it and another group in another side of it. That they cannot be together. They cannot be one. They cannot be on the same thing. They are in a different way. They are in dissension. They are not like you. They are in a different way opposing what you believe in. This is something that we need to believe in. Truth and falsehood, they cannot be the same. Someone saying that this is the truth and someone saying the opposite of it, both cannot be correct. One is right and one is wrong. Many, it sounds very clear, but many people on the face of earth, they don't see that. They don't see that falsehood opposes the truthfulness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِنَّ أَوْ إِيَّاكُمْ لَعَلَى هُدًا أَوْ فِي ضُلَالٍ مُبِينٍ That either us or you on guidance or in clear astray. If someone says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high has a son for example. Either he is right or wrong. And for those who say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no partner, has no son. He is the only one to be worshipped. One is right and one is wrong. Both cannot be correct. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear. And the message of all the messengers of Allah, that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And the same thing in matters of dispute, that one or the other is right or wrong. It's not the same as that you might have more than one thing and they're all correct. The Prophet sallallahu for example, did more than one thing. It means if a person do this or do that, this is not something that is falsehood and truthfulness. This is something they're all correct. But someone saying one thing and the other saying totally the opposite of it, one is right and one is wrong. And this is what the Qur'an says. وَإِن تَوَلَّوْ فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شِقَاقٍ We're living at a time that is sometimes it's deceiving to many that when they say you have to accept others, it's different between accepting others and accepting all beliefs, meaning you cannot say that everything is right, everything is correct. No, we have to be very clear. There is what is correct and there is what is wrong. And it doesn't mean that if someone is on the wrong or disbeliever, that means that we would deal with them with injustice. These are two separate things. We believe in the truth and we treat others with justice, with goodness, with kindness. This is part of our religion. But to mix and to think that for us to be kind to others, we have to accept their faith, meaning that we would deny our belief, that we would compromise the, the faith and the belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do. This is not permissible in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that we have to hold fast to it as Muslims. Especially when it comes to dealing with others, different faiths. Some people, they try to please them in a way that is not according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By compromising the deen of Allah. By, the, by saying that we all on the truth, it cannot happen this way. We have to make it very clear. This is what we believe in, but we will treat you nice. We will care for you. We would not harm you. We would, not, we would not treat you with injustice and so on and so forth. Two separate things. But matters of belief, this is something that has to be clear in the hearts of the believers. And they would be in dissension, meaning that they would always be having some form of enmity against you. If they believe different than you, doesn't mean that all of them would be like this, but a group of them would be always in state of enmity against you. That means you have to be careful. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exposing the affairs of others. That means whoever turn away from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he or she should not blame no one but their own selves. So they would be, uh, there, there has to be some form of enmity on the face of earth. And the believers are aware of this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed, informed them about it. And they would take precautions and means to protect themselves and protect their religion. And at the same time, they would never deal with others with injustice. They would always deal with them with matters of justice. فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شِقَاقٍ If they turn away from this belief, they are in dissension, they are in a different way, they would oppose you and so on. And they would take the means to, uh, to distinguish the, the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to oppose the truth which we see on the face of earth. We have to be patient by following the ways of the messengers and the messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent in the nations before to, to hold fast to the truth to defend the truth and never to compromise the truth with the slightest way. We have to be very firm. We have to explain the deen of Islam the way it is. There is no need for us to change anything. It's the religion of Allah. It is not 
our religion in the sense that we own it. It's the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high. And we are nothing but followers and people that would call others to the truth. We don't have the authority to change in it or to keep things of it or to explain what we like and we do not explain what we don't like. There is nothing hidden in the deen of Allah. We should not be shy or ashamed of anything. This is the truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the believers, the Muslims, they need to be proud of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The belief is very clear. The rulings also, what is clear in matters of rulings, we should not be uh, ashamed of it. This is the truth. This is the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that calling people to the truth and the, all forms of purity and so on. وَإِن تَوَلَّوْ فَإِنَّهُمْ فِي شِقَاقٍ If they are against you, if they are in dissension, if they would have a dispute with you, O Prophet of Allah, and the followers of the Messenger wasallam, then listen to this. This can bring some fear in the hearts of the believers. If they disbelieve in what we believe in, they would bring enmity, harm against you, and so on and so forth. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforting the Prophet wasallam and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and the followers of the companions radiallahu anhum, فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ اللَّهِ Which means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sufficient for you against them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be enough for you. You don't need anyone else to help you against those who are in dissension, against those that who would try to fight you, try to destroy you. You only need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way it is. There's no exaggeration in this. There's no, but we need to do this or to do that. This is it. This is enough. That's it. That, that's the end of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for you. And who is better protector and sufficient and provider for you than the one that created you? The one that there is no walking creature unless it's under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the messengers of Allah, they were holding fast to this. This is such an important meaning that once we have the grasp of it, this is the happiness of this life and in the hereafter. And we'll continue with that, inshallah ta'ala, right after the break. Let's talk. So this is something that you have to point out to, the, to them in the Bible. It's something which is, I think, very highly needed by the youth which is uh, staying firm on the truth. This is just one of the greatest examples for me of how to control your anger. Within the framework of, of being the cleanest religion, the cleanest jurisprudence, and in the meantime, uh, uh, the kindest religion to animals. Watch Let's Talk with Khalil Amanet as he interviews guests and discusses a variety of topics, everything from youth issues to religious issues. Join us here on Hoda TV. Why righteous companions? It is Islam that given us the sense of dignity. I love all of them in a way that you cannot imagine. That Umar ibn Khattab would say something and the Quran would come down matching what he said. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ Just compare, compare. What you did for Islam with just one of them. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. We left with something in verse number 137 that is basically the solution to all of our problems without any exaggeration because nobody would inform us about this better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they are in dispute with you, if you are in dissension with you, 
after you stated your matters of belief, if they disbelieve in this, they will try to harm you. They will try to come and destroy you and so on, a part of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sufficient for you. This is not just for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the companions radiallahu anhum. It's for every person that would follow in the same path that they walked in. For all the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for us. How can we be truthful in this? It's easy to be said. But it has to be truthful in our speech, in our actions, and before that, the certainty in what it means in our hearts. That means we do not need no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to matters of being victorious, to be helped, seeking the pleasure, we seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Some of us will fall into the trap of trying to find or try to seek the pleasure of others. They ridicule the believers. They would spread rumors about them. They would say bad things about them. And then you would find some of the true or some of the Muslims will try so hard to make themselves look nice to the disbelievers. And some of the times they would even compromise some of the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or compromise the sunnah, the way of the Prophet sallam, to look nice for people to accept them, to be like them or things of that nature. Why do we do this when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for you. You do not need to seek the pleasure of no one of the human beings. Seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that means that you would be kind to others, that you would speak nice to them, that you would choose the words of wisdom to say to them, that they, with time they would see that you're not someone that is trying to cause harm to them. But with being firm on the truth, believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for you. It's such a beautiful word that has to be true in all of our affairs. When it's time for the salah, we do the salah and we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for us. He is the one that ordered us to establish the salah. And He is the one that ordered us to seek provisions. And if He ordered us to establish the salah, the salah would never take away from our provisions. If He subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to stay away from sins, sins would never bring any goodness for us. And if a person believes this way, he does not understand what it means to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sufficient for us. Such a beautiful word that if we ponder over it, and this is what we need to do. Think of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for us. We do not need no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look into the life of the messengers before the Prophet sallallahu And the life of the Prophet sallallahu and his companions radiallahu anhum. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them victory because of the physical means that they had? They were outnumbered. They were outweighed when it comes to force and power and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them victory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them happiness when they didn't have the physical means of happiness. Who is the one that made them the happiest people on the face of earth? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they turned to Him alone, when they put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, focusing on this purpose of life, that no one would bring any benefit, no one can stay away from harming us unless it's all by the control and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ اللَّهُ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the hearing, the knowing. He hears what they're saying. And He's the all-knower subhanahu wa ta'ala. So have the comfort. Be busy and be focused on the job that you were entrusted to do. And that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be worried too much about their affairs. Focus on seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and having the concern towards them. How can they see the truth so that you would save them from being among the people of the hellfire? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stating the fact that how this belief is, how the religion of Islam is, it is not just what you say with your tongue that you believe in Allah and the books and so on and so forth. It's something that has to be not just something in your heart, but all of your body, in and out, has to be clearly in that state of Islam, in that state of submission. The verse number 138, Sibgat Allah, that this is the religion of Allah. The word Sibgha means, this is, literally means the dye that a person would use for as a chemical to change the color of a piece of cotton, for example. 
Once the color is changed, you cannot remove it. This is how a Muslim is. Not just to believe in the heart and then the actions are totally different. Concealing the truth, uh, deceiving others, compromising what we believe in. This is not what Islam is. Islam is to be firm and to be clear, to be kind and so on. But to show as a Muslim, to act as a Muslim, to speak like a Muslim, to believe like a Muslim, to deal with others like a Muslim, not the way that they would treat you, you would treat them. This is not Islam. Islam is to treat them according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you, not according to how they are treating you, and so on and so forth. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ صِبْغًا وَنَحْنُ لَهُ عَابِدُونَ Who is better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to his religion? His way that is basic, basically you are immersed in it. You are Muslim inside and outside and all of your affairs. You are in that state of Islam. وَنَحْنُ لَهُ عَابِدُونَ And we are in state of worship. We heard وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ We are in state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنَحْنُ لَهُ عَابِدُونَ We are in state of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. Not once in a while. Not once in a while that we show our identity as Muslims. When we go to the masjid, we look like a Muslim. We act like a Muslim. But then once we go outside the masjid, the mask, as if we take this mask off, and we put another mask on to treat others and to deal others the way they would like and forgetting about the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a sad attitude and a sad way of life. A Muslim is a Muslim in the masjid and with the same face and with the same faith and with the same belief and the same manners and all of our affairs the same way that we are outside the masjid, in our homes, in our work, in schools, in the market, Everywhere, that would need definitely patience. You would find someone maybe ridicule you. You would find someone that would make fun of you, might want to cause harm to you. What is the choice but to be steadfast on the deen of Islam? This is the beautiful way of life. This is how the companions radiallahu anhum were. They were in that state of Islam at all times. They didn't have these different, many different faces or double standards and lying and deceiving, which is the nature of many of the affairs on the face of earth today. People would say one thing, and they change it when they see that uh, the benefits and the losses are different. They would say one thing, and then when they see that people are not accepting that, they would change their words. It doesn't matter to us whether people follow us or not. What matters really is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and we are in state of worship. This verse, inshallah ta'ala, we'll talk about it if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life next time. Because this is basically shows the nature of this religion, the nature of this way of life, that it's different than all different ways of life. That we are in state of submission at all times. Doesn't mean that it would make our life difficult. No, it means that we would still enjoy our life. Eat and drink and get married and so on and so forth. But in the state of Islam, according to the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once from us. These verses, we see many benefits in them. It basically, if we ponder even more of these verses, you would find that the whole religion of Islam is mentioned in them. And this is the beauty of the Quran, the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that makes the comprehensive way of life, which is the religion of Islam, you can have them in general terms. We need general terms and we need specifics. We need general terms for the person's heart to be comfort and we have the proper vision and the bigger picture of what the religion of Islam is all about. And then to be truthful is to take these general terms and to make it true in all of our specific acts of worship. It cannot go outside of what we had already believed in. Same way when a person says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. It means something. It means that afterwards, the acts of worship, anything that we get to know that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would worship Him alone. We would obey Him subhanahu wa ta'ala because we already believed in the general statement that we have to be truthful in every specific thing that would fit this general statement. So what are these benefits we heard? We need to say that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the books and the messengers and so on. Believe in the monotheism and the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believe in the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His names and attributes and lordship in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe in the messengers. They believe in the books as we heard. To 
say that it's the bounty and the favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he revealed these books to the messengers. وَمَا أُوتِيَ مُوسَى Musa alayhi salam, Jesus the son of Mary, they didn't take it themselves. They didn't receive it by their own selves. They didn't receive it themselves. It was given to them. The bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The revelation is given to the messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is from the creator of the heavens and the earth that shows the great and the vast mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, we get to see that iman or faith is not just in the heart, it's in the heart, in the tongue, in the different parts of our body. That's why the iman increases and decreases, increases with the good deeds and decreases with the bad deeds. It also shows the difference between the true believers and the messengers of Allah and those who would claim to be believers when they don't really, in reality, believe in the messengers. Those who believe in Musa salam, Moses, if they do not believe in Jesus, the son of Mary, they are disbelievers. Those who believe in Jesus, the son of Mary, and they do not believe in Muhammad wasallam, they are disbelievers. How can a person believe in a messenger and disbelieve in another messenger? This is the way of Ibrahim salam. If they all believe in Ibrahim salam, then they need to believe in all the messengers. What made them believe in Musa salam? only? Or uh, some of the messengers of Allah. What made them would believe in only Prophet Ibrahim salam. The same way that they believed in all the messengers of Allah, they need to believe in all of them. Till the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shows also the vast mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that how he bestowed his favors onto the believers, by ordering them to do what is right. By ordering them to say what is right. This is the ease in the religion of Islam. Sometimes people, when they talk about the ease in the religion of Islam, they limit it to some rulings of halal and haram. It's true. But when we say in matters of belief also, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy in matters of belief. You know, when you talk about different religions and so on, they make it difficult for people to believe. They make it so complicated to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So complicated that it needs a genius to figure it out. In which in the religion of Islam, which is the truth, that it doesn't matter that a person in the desert or the jungle or someone that has a PhD, doesn't matter. All of them would understand very clearly the meaning of the Tawheed and the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the ease in the religion of Islam. The one that created you and provided for you, worship him alone. And that's the end of it. And this is how clear and how easy it is, the way of life, and that is the religion of Islam. It's an amazing, when we ponder over this, to see that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his book clear in all of our affairs. In anything that we need in our life, we would find a solution to it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it also shows the belief of the companions of the Allah anhum, that we have no other choice but to follow their way, to follow their belief, to follow their understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu not because they were righteous only, but because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the one that ordered us and showed us that that nobody would receive guidance unless they believe in what they have believed in, meaning the early generations of Islam and the believers, those who would follow them. The importance of guidance which is the most important need that a human being would seek on the face of earth because it's a continuous happiness. We should never ever be deceived with this life and the materialistic things of this life that take us away from the purpose of our life, that this life is so short. That once a person departs from this life, it's either Jannah or the Hawfire. It's either, the, either everlasting happiness or everlasting misery. So why shouldn't the human being take the matter seriously? Think about it seriously and ponder over it and seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the real happiness on the face of earth. Also we learn from these verses that there is truth and there is falsehood. Both they cannot be the same. This is basically how this life is. Messengers of Allah, they did not, or they were not sent to the people to tell them that you're okay if you stay on, on matters of disbelief, and it's better for you, or you'll still be okay if you follow us. There's no such a thing. The messengers of Allah, why people oppose the messengers of Allah? 
because they came and told them that you were wrong. You are in state of disbelief. For you to believe, you need to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. You need to worship Him alone. And they would say things about their idols that they're worshipping, that this is matters of disbelief. This is how their people had the enmity against them. And they would do this in the most uh, kind way. And this is how the believers should be. That we believe in the truth, and there is opposite to the truth is falsehood. And the beautiful meaning that we need to take with us, فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sufficient for you. That you do not need nobody but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn to Him alone. In salah, in dua, in all of our affairs, whether it's matters of, of this world, whether matters of the hereafter, all of our affairs, our iman, to increase our iman, we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. To be steadfast in our salah, to wake up for fajr prayer, we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for us. To be kind to others, we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Our marital affairs, disputes, uh, problems in our life, anything that we face, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for us. We need to turn to Him sincerely, truthfully, seeking help from Him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He is the most merciful and the most high, the most wise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the true believers and to make us benefit of what we hear and listen. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا